and you're good. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of Minor Obsession. We've got a special show for you. You know, sports are a little up in the air for the fall right now, and we don't want to get too busy reporting on things that could be or might be, but you know what is happening? Racing. The racing world is hot right now. It's one of the only sports going on, and not sure if you're aware, but the Charlotte 49ers have a recent alumni who is currently running some races in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. Uh, so we're joined today by Stefan Parsons. Stefan, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate y'all having me on. Absolutely. Always excited to talk to a Charlotte uh, grad and somebody with, uh, we'll say, storied history in the NASCAR stock car racing world, family past, a little pedigree there, and uh, trying to make a name for himself now. You're a young gun trying to get up and, and coming in the, the racing world. So excited to hear a little more about yourself. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to be here. You know, it's cool to connect with, you know, obviously former, former 49er alumni. So it's cool to kind of keep that network and, and, and do that. So diving in, folks listening may, may or may not be big racing fans uh, and know about uh, your father and your uncle. But let's start back in your childhood. Obviously, probably a little young for the um, catching your father and your uncle in action, but how'd you, how, how was growing up in that type of racing family with, with two, um, you know, heavy hitters in the racing world in your household? Man, it was awesome. You know, um, people have always asked me, you know, when did you know you want to be a race car driver? I've never not known that I wanted to be a race car driver just because it's literally, you know, it's literally what I've grown up in. I'm a firm, I'm a firm believer that you're a product of your environment. And that was my environment growing up was racing. That was all I, that was, all, that's all I've ever known. So I'm really blessed that I've been able to be immersed in the sport from a young age. Um, I remember I, my dad retired when I was three years old, but I actually remember his last race at Kentucky in 2001 was the same weekend as my third birthday. So I remember having a little birthday party in the in our motor home in the uh, in the infield. So like just from a young age, I just have racing memories, and um, obviously it's been really helpful since I started since I started racing in 2010 to have uh, my dad to lean on um, to have his knowledge of the sport and you know him him owning a team as well when I was growing up kind of gave me a different perspective of it and the perspective of kind of the, 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 the part that people don't see very often, you know, not, not just from the behind the scenes part, but from the, from the back half of the garage, just him owning an underfunded team and trying to, to do more with less resources, which is some of the same situations I'm in now. So uh, I've been really blessed to, to have grown up in the environment that I have for sure. I imagine there's a lot of traveling over the weekends. Did you get to go around and see a lot of the racetracks when you were that young or were you staying close to home? Uh, so my, like I said, my dad stopped racing when I was three. So, and he started doing uh television full time for the truck series for speed and for Fox. So I didn't really get to go with him to the racetrack until I was basically until I started racing, but I have some really fond memories of they used to have before they would race at, at Charlotte for the, for the Coke 600 or the, or the bank of America 500 in the fall, they would, um, have test sessions uh, where pretty much all the teams, whether it be uh, the Den Bush series and the cup series would come to the racetrack and they would practice and try to get their setups better and that kind of thing. And I have very fond memories of my dad taking me uh, to those test sessions and me being immersed in that environment. And uh, those are my, the, my fondest memories growing up as far as being at the racetrack. And then obviously once, once I started racing myself, I was able to, uh, and he owned his team. I was able to definitely travel a lot more. Like 2010 to 2015 uh, was when I really was able to to travel more and get the experience of being at the racetrack. But it didn't matter where I was at home watching on TV or in person uh, watching at the racetrack. Like I, it's just something I've always had a huge passion for. So 2010 to 2015, you're traveling. What makes you have that desire to? go to UNC Charlotte and get your degree from the best school in the world, plus the Bell <laughs> College of Business, the best school within the best school in the world. Great mm -hmm. decisions being made all over. How do mm -hmm. you get there? Yeah, so um, 
obviously uh, when I was in high school my junior senior year you, you know your advisors or whoever it may be start kind of itching you towards the college application process and all that fun stuff and um, her and my advisor told me you know what so what what schools are you going to apply to I was like UNCC and uh, she was like well you don't you know don't you want to apply to like Clemson to app to Chapel Hill I was like nope I was like, I'm going to UNCC, one, because it's a really good school, two, because they have a very good business school, and I, uh, I wanted to go the route of, of marketing. Uh, I thought about doing engineer, engineering for a little bit. I'm not good at math, so I decided marketing, and to, again, to help me with the search for sponsorship, but um, yeah, so she tried to get me to apply for multiple schools, and I literally only applied to UNCC, um, and UNCC is also convenient because I, you know, I live... And when I was in high school, I lived 30 minutes from UNCC, so I was able, uh, through my through my college career, to continue racing and continue to be local and be able to work at the shop, be able to work on my car and that sort of thing. Yeah, I saw you did some Bandolero cars for a while. Um, those are always fun to go to, especially at the Charlotte Speedway, uh, seeing yeah. the short track run there. Um, did you, when you were in college, uh, did you make it over to the – the racing lab stuff. We got a lot of really cool stuff going at UNC Charlotte on that front. And I'm, I'm sure growing up around cars, you got to be pretty handy with the mechanical side of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I always, I never, I never got to go in just because I don't know, I guess I was a little shy walking in. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't really know anybody who was in that program, but I would always like, you know, if I had to leave school or I would, or I was driving, whatever, I would actually drive through campus, drive down by the football field and drive by just to see what was kind of going on. Cause you could kind of see through the window, see what they had going on. I could, you could see the legend car in there. You could see the old cup car they had in there. Uh, I would definitely always do that to see what they had going on in there. And if they're listening, we expect them to give you an invite and a tour once we're post COVID <laughs> hopefully. I think, I yeah, think that's, that would be a, awesome. that's a must have. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. And uh, so you literally just graduated college um, a couple months ago, right? Uh, yeah. And so you're obviously probably still pretty ingrained with the sports side of the world. Do you keep up with the football team, the basketball team? What are your thoughts on this season if it gets to happen? I've always, you know, I've always had a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of pride in being a Niner, being a 49er. Um, unfortunately, like I, you know basically all four years of college, I was pretty much gone on the weekends most of the time. So I never really had the opportunity to make it out to games. Um, I, I hope it happens just because not only like, you know, these athletes, whether it be basketball, uh, football, baseball, tent, like in every sport, you know, this is their, these are their years of eligibility. You know, you never know, you know, if, if these, some of these players, some of these seniors lose a year of eligibility, then, it may completely alter the course of their lives, but, you know, obviously we want to do it in a safe and, and healthy manner. That's safe for everybody. But I think, I think if there can be, if there is a way, if we can find a way to have sports, I think it's, it's, it's going to be extremely important to do so. And we mentioned racing is actually able to currently go on and you've had your chance to run a few races over the past couple of months with BJ McLeod Motorsports. How's that been going for you? And you know, what's that engagement like where you get to uh, do a partial season in Xfinity series? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I, I've had a, we've had some great runs with BJ McLeod Motorsports. Haven't always gotten the finishes that we deserve. Um, but it's just, it's really, you know, you grow up, doing things a certain way your entire life. And then all of a sudden COVID-19 is here and your method, you know, it's just like any athlete when you are, when it's crunch time and you know, it's, you're getting hours before the race, you have a routine, you know, not necessarily superstitious, but just the way that things happen and, way, and things that you're used to and how things go. And, and part of that has been, you know, interaction. Well, not, not only interactions with fans, but practice qualifying, you know, trying to work on your car and then race day, you have interaction with fans, with sponsors, you have meetings and all of that is, is gone now. It's, we literally show up and we get in the car and we race. There's no practice. There's no fans. So it's definitely been a different experience for me, for sure. You know, I've been lucky enough to where I've been able to go whenever I'm not racing, I've been able to go, uh, go work as a mechanic, whether it be for BJ or, uh, or for uh, the cup team, 
but it's been, it's, you know, it's just been weird. You know, you kind of have to get, and just like, you know, you, you get used to this, then it's going to be weird once we have fans back, which, you know, we want fans back sooner than la- rather than later, obviously, but it's just been, it's definitely something to get used to. Yeah. Does that yeah, help did- with, I was just curious, does that help with, with the, like the focus of driving, not having the distractions? Not, you'd be surprised, not really, because part of what gets you focused and what gets you in the mentality, you know, to, to go out there and do your job are those interactions that you've been used to, you know, going to the driver's meeting two hours before the race, qualifying four hours before the race, interacting with fans and signing autographs. Like that's part of what's, what gets you into the mentality of, all right, it's time to go out here. It's time to, you know, get, get your game face on. So it's actually been it's actually been a little bit, you know, not I wouldn't say detrimental, but just something to get used to and something to adjust to for sure. Scott's thinking of his days that we took him to Bowman Gray, and uh, that's a distracting <laughs> track to run right there. And he's thinking about all the fans. Yeah, you, you go to you go to Bowman Gray to watch a fight, and sometimes a race breaks out. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful uh, thing, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Trust me, I know. I've been there a few times. So going back to what you just said just a, a minute ago about getting the opportunity to be, you know, on the mechanic team and, and stuff like that, I actually saw an article you did a, a couple months ago or maybe even a year ago at this point that I really respected where you said, you know, I might not be running a race, but I'm going to go there and I'm going to show these these people that I really want to be a part of this. I'm going to do whatever I can to help. That's a really cool mentality to have, and I feel like something that's going to set you up for success. Talk a little bit about that and, you know, how you you uh, put yourself out there every week in any way you can. Yeah, well, I, you know, my dad instilled for me from a young age is, is hard work and how, how important work is in this sport. You know, if, at the end of the day, even if you're not driving, if, if you're not there, if you're not wrenching on a car, being a mechanic, in any, in any capacity – at the end of the day, it's out of sight, out of mind, right? You know, you stay there every week, whether you race or not, and your people see you. People see that you're working. People see that you're willing to do what it takes to make it, to make a name for yourself, to, to be a mainstay in this sport. And that's basically what it's all about, you know. And I grew up um, racing late models around the southeast, around North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, working on that myself. So, I, you know, that was a good place for me to learn how to work on them. And then I'm able to use that knowledge now uh, when I'm not racing, even when I am racing, use the knowledge I have of the mechanics of the car and what makes it tick uh, to hopefully further my career. So you um, are doing a partial season right now. Do we have anything else in the works where fans can be excited to see upcoming? You, you working on a few things where we might get to see on the racetrack in the coming months? Yeah, definitely. We're working on some sponsorship stuff. We're always looking for partners and, and for, for, for marketing partnerships and anybody who's, whose brand we can help grow through, uh, through the NASCAR uh, stage. Uh, yeah, just work. We, you know, working really hard with, with our group to try and find some more partners to make some stuff happen. Not, you know, we're going to definitely going to have a few more opportunities through the end of the year. We don't have anything to announce yet, but we're working hard to, uh, to get more opportunities for sure. Does Xfinity run the same kind of timeline as the, the main cup in terms of like kind of dwindles down in November and then restarts in February? Is that about it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. We all, we all Xfinity cup and trucks. We all, uh, we're all in our season uh, beginning in November at Phoenix. And then obviously we all start around the same, the same weekend. It's usually around Valentine's day in Daytona in February. Scott and I grew up in Mooresville, so it was kind of indoctrined in us that we had to at least know a little bit about racing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, Race City, USA. That's right. (laughs) Nothing better. Well, and we do have a little surprise. I know you got a sneak peek of it, but for the fans viewing, uh, one of the main reasons we wanted to talk to you today is uh, we have a little side project Tim Norris has been working on. Scott, is Tim uh, around where we can add him into the call? I am adding him as we speak. Tim, are you on? I see you guys. You see me? Um, looks like your video may be off. There we there go. There it is. Nice. Hey, Tim. Got Stefan on with us, too. What's up, Stefan? Hey, man. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. 
We were just uh, getting ready to dive into uh, the awesome one-of-a-kind collectible that you were inspired to make uh, as part of, you know, Stefan's Charlotte Strong truck that uh, he ran after uh, the tragic events last year. So um, I, maybe, Stefan, do you want to lead us in with a little bit about how you, you came to want to run that truck? And then we can let Tim talk about his uh, design here. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously I was um, a student uh, at UNCC when the terrible tragedy happened last year. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really, it was really moving, you know, to know that, you know, somebody I was classmates with, somebody I walked by every day at school lost their life in, you know, on our last day of class, you know, a day of celebration. So I, I really was trying to think of a way to, uh, to honor their memory and the opportunity came to, uh, to drive the truck at Charlotte, uh, which was aptly number 49. And I thought that would be a great way to try and honor uh, my fellow classmates memory. And, uh, you know, the, the, the bravery and heroism that, that they displayed that day in saving more lives. Uh, so that was really an awesome honor to be able to do that. And something that's still very special to me. Uh, I was, I was lucky enough to actually, be able to uh, take the right side off that truck, the right side panel. And um, I was able to give it to Riley Howell's uncle, Matt. So that was really cool. I was able to give that to the Howell family. So just something that was really, uh, really, really neat to be able to do to, to honor my classmates. Yeah. Tim, yeah. obviously you took that as a little inspiration to create this beautiful helmet. I can be the model if you want to talk while I give it a little turnaround. <laughs> well, you know, I wish I could have spent a little more time with it. Like uh, you and I talked about, John, when this, uh, you know, everybody got the COVID lockdown and uh, out here I am. I moved all my studio into my garage and been working from here and getting a little stir crazy. And uh, all sports are gone. I think this is when they were NASCAR was driving virtually, and mm. I was like, "Man, you know, can we do something to just kind of keep? Yeah, at least we can have fun with it and and try to keep everybody's interest in sports up. And let's just do some little giveaways, and it keeps me fresh. Just doing a little, all my commission stuff, and I, I just was left with time on my hands and locked away with a wife and three kids for a few days." <laughs> And so as I was looking for stuff to do, man, and uh, that was one of them. And, and cleaning up my studio and stuff, you know, that was one of the items I found was one of those blank helmets. I've probably had that thing for close to 20 years. And uh, I remember Stefan's truck. And, man, it's such a, you know, such a beautiful paint scheme. And I got to look at it a little more working from it to do the helmet design. And uh, I don't know. The artist did such a good job of adapting the 49 or the, the, the C pick logo to the car. And I've done a lot of those in the past. I don't know how much Stefan uh, knows of my background, but I mean, I, I came here from Virginia to work in NASCAR back in. I started out for a t shirt manufacturer back in 1095, and they closed down. I kind of moved around, worked in mobile marketing for a few years doing Winston. It was Winston Cup then, painting transporters, and then that was before vinyl graphics. And then eventually came back and just started working, doing custom work for some cup teams like uh, Valvoline and Furniture Row and the like. And um, so it got me back into a rhythm of doing motorsports, and I, I really enjoyed that. And I really enjoyed it with being, you know, uh, Charles paint scheme. And I just got to study my subject matter a little bit more as I was doing it and read more up on Stefan. I, I don't understand why, I don't know, I guess I do in a, in a, in a marketing sense, but why well, wasn't around a little more. Lights, lights went off. And, uh, yeah. uh -oh. huh? Can't plan for that. No. Lives, lives. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so, just had fun and tried to come up with something. I was like, you know, let me just take this. If we get Steph on the autograph it and something for the UNCC fans and just, do, do, I don't know, we did the little helmet contest with the Christmas tree ornament and that, that, that was fun. And, uh, 
just looking at different things to just just kind of pick up. And I, I was like, man, you know, I come from motorsports. I got to do something with motorsports. And it just seemed like the perfect storm of things to do. I just the reason behind the subject matters is kind of solemn, and I just kind of. But other than that, it was a beautiful truck, and I didn't think it got as much pub as it deserved. So I figured, you know, I, talking with you guys, minor obsession. I was like, well, hey man, let me do this and see if we can get stuff on board. Do do a little contest and maybe give a give it give that that pub and his ride a little extra mileage, so to speak. You know? Yeah, and it's a beautiful helmet. It was a beautiful truck scheme, like you said. I mean, I think we talked about when you were first thinking it through it, and I said, man, that was a that was a beautiful truck, the black with the c picks on the side. Um, so we've got this nice helmet that we'll be uh, asking a few questions on social media, so keep your eyes out there. It is a one-of-a-kind beauty is all Tim Norris's uh, artwork is. But here's the question I have to ask both of you. So, Stefan... You did a uh, cool Niners themed truck. Now we obviously have a new logo. I actually have one of the CLT shirts on here. And Tim, you made this before the rebranding came out. I feel like Stefan needs to run a, a new Charlotte truck that we can do another helmet giveaway with an all in C on it or yeah. some CLT on the side. Can we get that in the works? Uh, or maybe just can we get Stefan a helmet in the works with some CLT on it? Hey, I'm all for it. I'm all about school pride. I'm all about Niner pride. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. I mean, I, I've done a lot of promo helmets for, you know, pro bono. Just, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm going to put it in Stefan's court and just say, hey, man, get me a helmet. And I'll, I'll, I'll paint for you. <laughs> Seems like we'll a good deal that. there. I don't mind that. <laughs> I've got a good well, deal on those, so. Yeah, we'll get, uh, Chris Fuller on the line and tell him we're doing his rebranding gig for him getting into the <laughs> racing world. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think he'd, have, he'd probably want to get involved with some, you know, give a little input here and there. So yeah. I don't know. I've seen the new football helmets and they turned out nice. So that kind of gets the juices going on a race helmet. For sure. You know, you can't, can't let the, the racing community be won up by the football team. So. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right, well, I feel like we've kept you here long enough, Stefan. We appreciate you stopping by. It was really good to get to know you. Um, you know, we've done a few other interviews with non-Charlotte team sports. Obviously, there's not really a racing Charlotte 49ers team that we can follow and, and uh, do some pub for, but it's nice to know that there's Charlotte alum out in the world that uh, – are carrying the, the torch forward for the 49ers and in other sports that maybe aren't traditional college sports. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really appreciate you'll have me on. Uh, the helmet is, is so cool. I can't wait to get my hands on it and autograph it and give it away for a good cause. And yeah, it's just, it's really awesome. Thanks. Thanks, man. Sounds good. And I'm serious about the helmet, man. Get it to me. We'll do a pro bonus job. We'll do it upright, man. We'll have <laughs> yeah. we don't get into stuff like we'll, that. We'll, you guys know me. I'm, I'm all about stirring, making some waves out there in the media community. So. That's true. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll put it in the works for sure. All right. That sounds good. All right. Well, you got Sean's number, so you know where to find me. <laughs> and, I, and I follow you on Instagram, so it ain't, like, it ain't, it ain't hard to find me, so. Oh, Tim, yeah. I'm still I'm still waiting for my jacket too. <laughs> I got it sitting right over here. Look, I look, I I, I probably had about seventy percent done, and then they come out with the rebrand, and I'm sitting here looking at it, going, "Well, I got it. I did it. I did. I'm gonna wait to show it to you. I had to do a little tweaking to kind of get it into <laughs> into the new mode of thinking with the new branding. So, yeah, no, no pressure. I'm sure whatever you pull out is gonna be amazing. Well, it's gonna look good. Oh yeah, because you guys Throwback. rebranded too. We did. We did. That's right. Yeah, you guys got a sharp looking <laughs> logo now too. That kind of goes with it. So I, I was just like, man, you know, they could have given me a heads up before I got started. <laughs> anyway, you know, I can roll with it. Well, when you make Stefan's uh, helmet, you make sure to put a little minor obsession on the side of that too. We'll we'll take oh, the yeah. free promo. <laughs> I'll work in. I'll make I'll make sure it's worked in. <laughs> uh, awesome well thank you both for uh taking the time and 
I think this is going to be a fun giveaway that everyone's going to be excited about. Absolutely. Sean, show one more time. Well, yeah. I think I have to talk for me to show up on the, the camera. So yeah. I'll talk for a second and just say, we're going to come up with some cool questions based on this interview. So um, be on the lookout for that in the next couple of days and get ready to, t to take home this bad boy and have it uh, one of a kind collectible for life. And, and in case nobody can see Sean um, too well, when you blend, when you lean the helmet down, it's his tank scheme. And I just threw in a throwback. What I started with 10 years ago when the football team was picked was a, I call, we called it the swing and norm. And it was something that I put on uh, Gray's bookstore on the side of the wall. And that's just kind of kicked off that my whole involvement with a lot of different stuff here in the Charlotte community. Um, what, 10, 11 years ago, I guess? I guess it has been that long. Yeah, Stefan might be too young to even know Grace. Oh, He's I know Grace. I, 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 I bought all my books from Grace, so I shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's a smart belt college alumni right there. Oh, yeah, you can't – you got to get it from Grace. Way cheaper, way better. <laughs> Rest in peace. Awesome. All right, well, well, thank you all again. And remember, wear green, go Niners. And uh, – Hopefully sports happening this year. Fingers yeah. crossed. Keep your eyes out on the Xfinity for the next time Stefan runs here. Sometime yeah. soon. We know it's happening. Definitely. All right. See you guys. Thank you. See you all later. Bye. Thanks. All right, bye.